Less than four years ago, the life of my next guest was a mess. He'd been an alcoholic for almost two decades. He'd lost all hope of there ever being an escape from his addiction to drink. He'd been in and out of recovery groups and tried and failed at every addiction recovery method that he could find. In his late 30s, he found himself living in a village in Thailand, literally waiting to die. But then he heard about a treatment offered at a particular Thai Buddhist temple and decided to give his life one last chance. And he's very glad that he did. Paul Carrigan, good morning. Thanks, Pat, for having me on your show. You're alive and well. I am alive and still here. <laughs> All right. How did, I mean, from an early age, reading your book, you were fascinated by drink. Yeah, I mean, I, I love what it did for other people. I mean, I... I think growing up in, in, in Ireland during the 70s and 80s, alcohol seemed to be everywhere, at least, at least in my world. And it seemed to give people like lots of confidence. And, you know, you could do lots of, you, were, you could do anything when you had a few beers. And people sort of had, there was this idea, I think, that, you know, you know, people are allowed to let their hair down now and again. But, I mean, it was this confidence that really sort of appealed to me because I wanted it. You know, I didn't have it myself. Now, you held down jobs and so on. You became a nurse, mm-hmm. so you had a, a profession. Um, how did you end up in Thailand? Now, this is before your, your recovery. How did you end up there? What attracted you to that country? It was, I mean, it was sort of a long journey to there. But, I mean, I was in Saudi Arabia and I sort of went there after that because I was, I was drinking myself to death in Saudi and I sort of said, if I was going to die somewhere... Is this a country where there's supposed to be no drink? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. That's why I went there. I thought, if, I'm, if I go to Saudi, I can't drink. You know, but there was more drink there. Like, when I landed on the aeroplane in Riyadh, they took me to the compound, and my, the first thing they showed me was the, the, where they brewed the illegal booze, and, you know, there was plenty. So there was no, any chance I had of giving it up was, was completely gone. Yeah, because the nature of living in the compound means that it's kind of a hothouse atmosphere, and all, all there is to do is drink. Yeah, and you go into a shop in, in Riyadh, Pat, and you, sort of, you walk around, all the stuff you need to brew are kept together. I mean, they, know, they sort of know what's going on, but they just sort of turn a blind eye to it. But I mean, and there was always stuff there, you know, and it's much stronger than that you'd, you'd find in yeah. Ireland or, or the UK. So, you know, I didn't have a chance, really. All right, so th- that didn't cure you. That didn't cure me. So I ended up in Thailand because I sort of said, OK, if, if I'm, if I'm going to drink myself to death, why not do it somewhere that's nice. actually nice? <laughs> yeah. And um, I, like, I had been working in England, but was, I had nothing to go back to there. So I just said I'd stay in Thailand. And I met this English girl and she said, why don't you try teaching? And um, so... So like you were making a living. I was making. I mean, I, well, I had some money left over from Saudi that I was yeah. spending in Thailand. Like, you know, that do me for a while in in Thailand. But I mean, that's soon. I soon drank that all away. You know, so eventually I got into teaching and 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 all that sort of thing. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's quite common. There's, there's, there's quite a lot of us that sort of end up in Thailand as our, you know, because the living is easy. Because the living's cheap. You know, you can yeah. you can you can drink you can drink cheaply. Yeah. And then, uh, that was the attraction for uh, me. G- give us an idea of h- how your day would be in Thailand. I mean, when would you start drinking and how much? Near the end, of, near the end, it was very bad because um, I ended up living in this sort of Thai village, which, which was like miles away from everywhere. You know, the nearest city was 100 kilometres away. There was no bars, no nothing. But I had my own bar that never closed in, in the house. And I would sit there drinking all day. And like there was no enjoyment left in it at all. But And my day was, it was this, this sort of... The goodness of my day was determined by if I could get some bottles down me the first thing in the morning. I mean, if I couldn't get these bottles into me, I would just spend the day shaking. And what were you drinking? I mean, mostly beer. I, 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 the, the, sort of the, the whiskey there is, is unbelievably bad. And I could afford beer, you know. If I, I, I liked beer because it allowed me to drink all day. Yeah. So you just kept going all day. And just, no one would comment on that because, you know, having a beer... People would comment, but I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really... I'd gone past caring. Like, at one stage, I, I, I ended up in the streets of London, so I'd gone past caring about them sort of things, you know, that... Um, how did you feel all the time? I mean, were you aware that your liver was in big yeah. trouble? Yeah, before, before I'd gone to Saudi, I had to have a medical checkup, you know, as part of the procedure. And uh, they did my liver function test, which, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a blood test. And they sort of said, listen, your LFTs are very elevated and you need to get this checked. And um, th- that doctor didn't want to sign off on me to go to Saudi. But I sort of, you know, I think us at were very good at, to- at sort of talking away other things. And I managed to convince her that I would go see a liver specialist in, in Saudi. And so she signed off for me. But my liver, I never went to, my, my way of dealing with it then was I never got it checked again. Now, did you want to dry out? I mean, was... Oh, yeah, d- yeah. Again and again you tried? Again, I tried everything, you know. I, I'd been in AA for two years. And, like, I had stopped before. And I could see how, how good my life could be without alcohol. Like, I entered my first treatment centre at 20. I mean, I, I, I had periods where I could see that life could be great. But I just it was always it was always this thing I was fighting it, and I, I read all the books. You know, my favorite thing used to be going to bars and, and reading about treatment, like re- reading about recovery. That was my that's my my favorite thing. Now it's really ironic, but I love to sit in the bar getting drunk, reading about getting sober, and but that could never work. You know, it's just 
yeah. was just wasting my time. Um, in Thailand then, there, there was a time when you figured, uh, yeah, I might try a bit of meditation and see does that get me straight. And now, this did. is before you found the place. Mm. That, that, uh, and h- how good was that? It, it worked. I mean, but the thing is, that th- these things can only work over time. You know, and you can't just go, like, you can't go to a temple and meditate for a month and then expect your, you know, go back, to, go back drinking again and things will be fine. Because, I mean, it's just, like, you have to sort of put a lot of time into something like that to get, to get the reward. So, I mean, it was just, I mean, it would, I would feel great in the temple and I would dry out. I mean, and I was crazy. I mean, I was turning up at these, tre- these um, sorry, meditation places and I'd be going through withdrawals. And that's not what they're for, you know. And now you'd be having the heebie-jeebies uh, yeah. <laughs> while you're supposed to be meditating. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, you were obviously searching for something and, and eventually you came upon this place which was, if you like, literally the last chance saloon because well, they only give you one chance. Yes, now. exactly. Yeah. They don't allow recurrence. If you come back to them again, sorry, sunshine, that's it. You had your chance. They don't want to know. Like, tell me about this place. OK, the place is called Wat Tam Kabok and it, it's a Thai treatment centre. And as you say, like it, there's no revolving door policy. You, you can only go one time. And um, it's very unusual. They, they don't... Like they're not, they don't have any sort of big um, sort of philosophy about you know it's, it's a disease or anything like that. Th- their idea is you know that like people use use addiction as a tool because they can't cope with their life, and if you and but it's it's not a very good tool and eventually it stops working. And that was my experience. But that that if you sort of if you give up drinking, and you know you do simple things, then your life will get better. And it, like it's run by Buddhists, but you know you don't have to be a Buddhist and you don't have to believe yeah. in anything Buddhist at all to go there. Now, one of the most extraordinary things is some herbal concoction they yeah. have, which seems to be at the heart of, well, it, it sounds to me like aversion therapy, because this is, uh, what they do to you is really yeah. awful. Tell me. This is why, I mean, it, I guess the reputation is the, is the toughest treatment centre in the world because of this medicine you take. And the medicine has, this is my, my opinion, the medicine has two effects. One is it makes you very, very sick. And you take it in the evenings with a group of other people. And for about 15 minutes, you, you, you sort of vomit very, you know, you, you have to drink water to get it out of your system. But you just, it's projectile vomiting, basically. And uh, you do it as part of a group. Now, now, I, now you were uh, left a sarong on your bed to put on. Exactly, yeah. And it was only after you came to the vomiting ceremony, and that's what it is, a ceremony, that you realised that the sarong had a purpose. Exactly. I, I thought it was a towel. I thought, like, you know, why do I want this sort of checkered towel? But yeah, no, that, that's what it was. I mean, you have to take all your clothes off because so, you only have one clothes to wear during the day. So you, you can't obviously get vomit on it. But I mean, th- th- there is a, a real po- I mean, people get really shocked when they hear about this. But there is a real point to it. I mean, just, it, it, for two things, I mean, one, it detox you very quickly. But I think that's only, I mean, anywhere can detox you. But the most important thing is it teaches you humility. I mean, ar- addicts are very, very, very arrogant. I mean, I was once on the, on the streets of London, like living, basically living in a gutter, and I was still looking down on everybody else. I, I still thought I had all the answers. And like all my life, I, I went to addiction treatment centres, and I still would think that there was somehow a mistake. But if you were in Thailand, like doing this, this, this vomiting treatment, there's no way you can kid yourself anymore. You know, you've been defeated, and you feel completely yeah. defeated. And th- that's how I felt there, you know. To, you know, this is what my life had come to. So, so the ceremony itself, there would be a number of you at the same time doing this. Yeah, all of us, all the ones that are going through. You do it for the first five five evenings, so all the people that are going through it do it together. And as well as that, there's uh, all the ex patients and monks come there, and you, you know, there's people playing instruments. They sing these songs, like Thai songs, that are to do with to do with the ceremony. Yeah. It's re- it's a very, I, I, I hate saying the word because I think it's overused, but it's very sort of spiritual sort of thing, and it's so upsetting when you first do it. But, you know, you just feel, you, know, you really sort of feel like it's changing your life. Um, and, and you found unexpectedly that uh, you had an appetite. Yes, that was, which is quite amazing. Because, I mean, I'd been, I'd been through withdrawals many times before. And, you know, they were always something I, I dreaded. And, you know, it would, take me, it would take me days to get my appetite back. You know, it would take me days to stop shaking. But, you know, this thing seemed to, seemed to work really, really fast. And that, like, that first evening I was able to eat after a couple of hours. Mm. And I was there with people like, you know, a heroin addicts coming up from Dublin. You know, the, the, the guy in the bed next to me was from Dublin. It was just so amazing. You travel all the way over there. Yeah. And he was from Dublin. And, um, you know, he was saying, like, you know, like he was in bits when he got there. But, I mean, he, he seems like the, the, it's something in the medicine speeds things along. So after uh, doing this for five nights in a row. You do it for five evenings in a row, yeah. Yeah. Um, what state were you in at the end of it? At the end of the medicine, I, I knew something had changed. Well, I mean, I was still... My last sort of, you know, I spent about two weeks in a temple and the last time, last week I was very worried that maybe, maybe, you know, because you, you sort of, 
you've been through things so many times before you, so it's really it's really hard to have faith. Yeah. But by the time I'd reached the last day, I knew that something you know had changed, and I, I left that temple like as I say I'd been sober before for two years, and I always felt I was fighting something. But I left that temple one morning, you know, one one time morning before dawn, and I just knew that whatever was wrong was was fixed, and that's the way I felt since then. Like that four the years. reasons you were drinking, all of those things that they had kind of what evaporated well, 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 the away. Need, well, the need that 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 sort of that thing that was missing. I mean, I knew my life was far from perfect, and I knew there was lots of work that would have to be done. But whatever, whatever. See, alcohol had stopped working, but I kept on trying to I trying to make it work. And that sort of logic just went. I just knew it was over. I knew the fight was over, that we no need to fight anymore. And which, which, which was an amazing, you know, it was an amazing feeling after. Because I, even when I, dr- if, if I drank for that 20 years, when I was drinking or didn't drink, I was still thinking about alcohol all the time. I mean, I didn't drink for two years and I thought about alcohol every day because I was going to meetings and it was my life. And I, I was fed up with being an addict. I wanted yeah. the whole thing to end. I didn't just want to, I didn't see that. And that's the, th- the thing, like I, li- I live near, near to the temple now. But I don't go there very often because there's no need. I mean, that, you know, you can't say never again, but that's how that's just how I feel, you know. So what have you done with your life since that time? My, my, my life has just been so fantastic these last f- four years. Um, you have this idea at the temple that, you know, you take this vow and good things will come into your life. And, and that has been so my experience. It's like, you know, I've got a, a lovely son, a lovely wife. You know, I, I continue to live in Thailand. Um you know, this book is, is you know, this, this is such a dream come yeah. true, like this, this book. I mean, I remember as a kid walking around Dublin, like taking how do people get books in shops. And I, I walked into Ethan's yesterday evening and I saw my book there, my, twi- my 20 books on display. And it was just, it was just yeah. such an amazing thing. And this like coming, you know, this, it's all amazing stuff. Well, th- there's a line in your book um, and it's a quotation, I think, but it says uh, that when you're ready, the teacher will come along. Exactly. And, and I, I really believe that I, I was in I had been in Thailand for five years and I'd never heard of the temple and I'd been searching and if I if I had found it maybe even a year earlier it probably wouldn't have worked I had to be that desperate you had to be ready I had to be desperate and that's why I was so glad I found it when I did and I think that's the thing I think when people are desperate they will find what they need to find well it's an extraordinary book it's uh, called it's got a great title Dead Drunk <laughs> Saving Myself from Alcoholism in a Thai Monastery is its subtitle. It's uh, published by Maverick House. I don't know how much it is. Uh, I, th- I think it's about 10 euros. About 10 euros. And uh, Paul Garrigan, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio this morning. I really appreciate it.